Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. We are in the middle of a series of studies on Ezra and Nehemiah, an ancient priest, an ancient court here that God used by His Spirit to give messages not only for their generation, but also for us today. Today we're going to glimpse at worship in Ezra and Nehemiah's time, worshiping the Lord, and it will inspire us as we think about our own worship of the Lord today. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School. What's the most important lesson we've learned from Ezra and Nehemiah so far? What do you think? God's in control. God is in control and God uses people, doesn't he? People like Ezra and Nehemiah, and of course you've got a contemporary with Esther, men and women of God who like, God, I'm available to be used by you. And we're just so glad that you are part of that global team because it's not just a few of us here, but Hope Sabbath School members in 150 countries around the world that are part of God's team, sharing the good news of a God who loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Here is Jimalai in Fiji who says, Bula. Bula. <laughs> That's a greeting. I want to praise God for the, the marvelous work the Holy Spirit is doing through Hope Sabbath School. I never miss any of your series. I always download all of, download all of the topics on my phone and share it with, with my friends. Amen. It helps me taking the Sabbath School class in my ministry at the park where I teach and share with those who sleep on the streets. Wow. 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 Powerful. We meet in the park every Sabbath. We also have Sabbath school in the park. We share lunch together. Sometimes there's not enough food, but God's love is more than what we need. Amen. Amen. After lunch, we go to the hospital and orphanages for visits. I tell you, Jim Lai sounds like on fire for Jesus, Amen. wouldn't you say? I thank God that he brought me to Hope Ministry to encourage me in every way and enlighten me and my family to Press forward until eternity, knowing the end is near and we should be ready to go home. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank you, Jim Life, for writing to us from Fiji. And um, he says, we really need your prayers for our lives, those who are on the streets, that we can hang in there no, what a, no matter what may come till Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. Well, did you know we had a Hope Sabbath School member in Fiji teaching wow. homeless people mm -hmm. in a park? Amen? Amen. 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 Solomon writes to us from Nigeria. Solomon, thanks for being part of our Hope Sabbath School family. I'm very happy with the work of God that you are doing, he says. I was born into a Christian family, and up till now, I'm still following Jesus. Amen. Amen. I watch your program every week, and it makes me happy, and I'm filled with the Spirit, even if I have problems. I turn and I watch the program and my problems go away. Wow. Well, that's interesting. Maybe the problems are still there, but I'm not focusing on them anymore. Yeah. Happiness in the Holy Spirit takes over. Yeah. Glory be to God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Well, Solomon, thanks for your testimony. You cheered us up. <laughs> and it's true. When we turn our eyes towards Jesus, as the song goes, the things of earth, what? They may still be problems and challenges, but they grow strangely dim. Mm -hmm. Roatan Honduras, Leonardo writes and says, I just want to say, keep up the good work. <laughs> it's a blessing to learn God's word and to understand God's word with you. I'm from Bay Island, Roatan Honduras. Well, Leonardo, thanks for the short note to... Hope Sabbath School, we're glad you're part of our family. Here's a short note from a donor in Pennsylvania. And I just want to thank each one of you that prays and supports our donor-supported ministry. Thanks once again for all you do to help people understand the Bible. Do you hear the theme coming through over and over again? Mm -hmm. My life would be lost without it. Mm -hmm. Wow. As always, keep up the good work of spreading God's word. Well, thanks for writing to us from Pennsylvania. We're glad that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Thank you for your support and your prayers. One last note from Gaetano in Malta, the island of Malta. Malta is where? Yeah, Greece. It's right in the Mediterranean Sea, not far from Greece. I am from Malta, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. I watch Hope Sabbath School when I'm at home. I sometimes lead a class at my church. Thanks for what you're doing. May the Lord bless you. 
may we all find ourselves in the city of God. Amen. Amen. That's the prayer, right? Mm -hmm. I pray for you. Please pray for me. I have still got some things to get rid of in my life to be more like Jesus. Amen. Well, you know, it's true. The closer we come to Jesus, the more we see yeah. mm -hmm. our own deficiencies. But we're not focusing on those things. Otherwise, what happens to us? Mm -hmm. We get depressed, right? Yes. We want to turn our eyes on Jesus. Amen. And then it concludes, I am thankful for all of you. God bless you, your brother in Christ in Malta. Amen. Well, Gaetano, thanks for writing to us from that beautiful island. And thanks to each one of you for writing to Hope Sabbath School. You can write to sshope at hopetv.org. We send it to the team, and it really gives us encouragement to see how God is changing lives around the world. Right now, we want to sing our theme song, 3,000 years old, the words, Psalm 25, the tunes, one that my wife uh, composed, and it's a cheerful little song. I feel like jumping when I sing it. <laughs> Why don't you sing it with us? You know, the theme for our study today is worshiping the Lord. Amen. And we were just doing that, weren't we? <laughs> you might say, I can't believe I just sung on global television. And the answer is, it's not about us. Amen. Amen. Uh, because someone in Roatan, someone in, what were some of the other places we read? Malta. Fiji and Malta. They're going to be singing along with us and praising the Lord. Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And on the day we gather by the sea of glass, I don't know what language we'll be singing, whether it will be the language of heaven or whether somehow God will merge all of those languages into wow. one symphony of praise. Mm. Amen. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. Maybe it will be a different tune. I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to focus today on worshiping the Lord. And we are going to learn some lessons mm. from the 5th century B.C. Mm. Mm. From Ezra and Nehemiah, who led the exiles in that second and third wave trying to get back to where God had originally called them to be. Mm. We'll learn some lessons. Let's pray the Holy Spirit will be our teacher today. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for Hope Sabbath School members around the world. We represent every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. You're calling your people to prepare for the soon coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And God, we believe that worshiping you in spirit and truth is a crucial part of our spiritual journey. Mm. And so as we study lessons from ancient inspired texts of Ezra and Nehemiah. May your Holy Spirit speak to us in a fresh way today. Mm. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Worshiping the Lord, singing the songs of the Lord. Let's start in Ezra chapter 3. And Stephanie, if you could begin our study today in Ezra chapter 3, <laughs> verses 10 and 11. Let's see how the people in the time of Ezra responded when the foundations were laid for the new temple. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together 
by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Isn't that amazing? Well, I thought we were having a good time with our <laughs> scripture song, but we didn't have trumpets and cymbals. Mm -hmm. yep. So there, how, how, how would you uh, describe what's going on here as the temple's foundation is being laid? Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're rejoicing over that their years of separation from the worship of their, their connection with God is finally over. And now they're back to this uh, where God dwells amongst them and they have their, their special relationship with God. How would you describe their rejoicing? Celebration. 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 Or jubilee. It, it's, you know, some of us, like, I was born in Britain, you know, we kind of <laughs> rejoice like this. That's about it, you know. <laughs> uh, it seems pretty uninhibited, doesn't it? Yes. Shouts of joy and cymbals and trumpets. We want to hold on to that as we go to Nehemiah, but we'll ask our question, what are some things that might hold us back mm -hmm. from worshiping God in spirit and truth? Now, mm. Someone told me this some years ago. I'll never forget it. They said, if, you, if in your worship you're trying to draw attention to yourself, mm -hmm. that's right. called exhibitionism. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? But if in your worship you, you're wanting to bring glory to God, you know, the little child that jumps up and, you know, is that exhibitionism? No. Or... My wife's grandma from China who would kowtow and blow kisses to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Is that exhibitionism or is that freedom mm -hmm. to worship in spirit and truth in their culture? Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Now, if she was doing it or someone's doing it just to draw attention to themselves. But let's think about this. I think you're right. They were, I mean, they were really... Is there such a thing as really rejoicing? <laughs> yeah. They were rejoicing in... Spirit and truth. Huh? Mm -hmm. Remember that picture Ezra described, and let's take a look in Nehemiah chapter 12. Jason, if you could read chapter 12, look at verse 27, 31, 42, and 43. We'll catch a little glimpse of what's happening here. Uh, you've got the temple in the time of Ezra, the foundations. Now they're celebrating that the walls have been rebuilt. Let's see how they s worship the Lord. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 27, 31, and 42 and 43. Now at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgivings and singing, with cymbals and stringed instruments and harps. Then we have verse 31. So I brought the leaders of Judah up upon the wall and appointed two large thanksgiving choirs. Mm. One went to the right hand on the wall toward the refuse gate. 42 and 43. Also, Messiah, Shemaiah, Eliezer, Uzi, Jehonan, Melchijah, Elam, and Ezer. The singer sang loudly with Jezariah, the director. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and the children also rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. Mm. What do you think? How would you compare that to the time of the laying of the stones in Ezra's time? Mm, very very similar. Similar. Similar, similar. Similar, right? Very similar. There were a few additions. Mm -hmm. What did you see in terms of additions? They had choirs. Two choirs. They had, they had choirs. these kind of antiphonal choirs, right? Mm -hmm. I think that was alluded to in the time of Ezra, but these were large choirs. Mm -hmm. What else? Instruments. They, they had they, stringed instruments yeah. too and harps, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like, and, and how far was the celebration heard? Oh. Far, far oh. away. Yeah. So there's this tremendous sense of singing songs of the Lord, mm -hmm. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And of course, probably many of those songs were songs of scripture, mm -hmm. like the one we sang for our theme song. Let's go back to the time of David in 1 Chronicles 25, 6 and 7. 
uh, where David appoints singers. Uh, we're looking here at way, worshiping the Lord, and certainly one way is worshiping Him in song. Somebody have First Chronicles 25, Travis, verses 6 and 7. What does it say? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. All these were under the direction of their father for the music in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the authority of the king. So the number of them, with their brethren, who were instructed in the songs of the Lord, all who were skillful, was 288. Mm. So I have a question for you. I mean... That's a lot of singers, yes. <laughs> 288. And what does it say about them? They were, they were, all, they were all accomplished. Yeah, they were skillful, right? Skillful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, some of us, you know, there's, there's leaders. Some of you are leaders and some of us are leaners. Yeah. That means, you know, we're not the soloists, right? Yeah. But these were all skillful. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, why do you think David appointed so many to be singers in the house of the Lord, 288? Well, I believe David recognized the importance to give God your 100% in worship. To him, it was important. He said, this is our God. We have to give him the best. We need our skilled musicians to praise God as joyful as they can. And he certainly did that personally, didn't he? Yes. He wrote many scripture songs yeah. and probably he sang many of them to an audience of one. Mm. Who was that? God. To the Lord, God. right? Yeah. yeah, he sang to you, oh Lord. I don't know what the tune was, right? <laughs> but just to an audience of one. But I think Evelyn's right. He, he sensed the value of worship as part of, mm -hmm. excuse me, of music as part of worship. Mm -hmm. And so he just wants lots of skilled musicians to help lead, Kenneth? Um, one important note is um, the direction, um, the directors in directing these people. Yes. Because even though you can be skilled, if you're not directed the right way, <laughs> you can go. Has anyone been part of a choir where there was no director? I mean, I suppose a very well-trained choir because it's kind of ingrained. Otherwise, it could be fairly chaotic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you mentioned, you noticed there, there was someone who actually directed them yeah. uh, so that things actually came at the same time. Good point, Gladys. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe uh, to avoid burnout, you know, when you have so many people, you can take okay. turns instead of having just the same person doing everything at the same time all the time. Uh, so, it, yeah, you've got almost one per day here, right? <laughs> 288. Uh, so instead of going, oh, I've got to sing again today, exactly. it's like, it's my day coming, yes. you know. <laughs> I'm going to be able to sing in the house of the Lord. I'm sure they did it in groups, but... Yes. Yeah, there were many reasons, but that's a fairly significant group to lead in songs of the Lord. Yeah, also I was going to add, uh, yeah. also the more the merrier. You know, it, like we read the verse before, it was heard afar off. So the more people you have, the more it could be heard. Because mm -hmm. I think that was one of the reasons why they had large choirs so that other nations can hear and see, whoo, what's all that about? You know, <laughs> intriguing them, you know, about the beautiful music that's being sung. Sure. So, so there, is, uh, there is a certain strength in numbers yes, yes. Yes. when numbers. you have a large choir or there they had choirs, antiphonal choirs, mm -hmm. singing back and forth to each mm -hmm. other. Quite impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to hyperspace forward to something Jesus said, and then I have an application question for us. Jesus said that the, that the Father seeks people who worship Him in spirit mm -hmm. and, in, and in truth. And in truth. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? That's a principle, Jonathan, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not saying, it's not like a specific description. What, what does that mean to you? Oh, and I think it can, what the spirit can look different for different people. To me, it's, it's examining our, our hearts. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think spirit certainly implies that you, when someone is filled with the spirit, it is coming out of them. It's not just something exterior. It's, it's um, God has changed their heart and it's flowing out of this relationship. But sometimes you can get really excited about things, maybe, and not all that excitement is is grounded in truth. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like it's it's capturing that yes, it needs to be emotional, it needs to be wholehearted, but it also needs to be based on truth. And so God wants all of us, uh, all every part of our body and brain, and, and, and to be intelligently appreciating who He is and wholeheartedly in love with and expressing that love to Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember someone while you're sharing saying, I don't mind making a fool of myself in front of God. 
Well, my question would be, is God asking you to make a fool of yourself in front of him? You know, mm -hmm. uh, I like what you, Jonathan said. My worship, we're talking here about music specifically, should be uninhibited. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't know. I'm not the greatest singer. Maybe I can't just be really singing like this because Johnny can sing a lot better than I can or Susan is much more. So I'm not like mm -hmm. inhibited by what others might think. But my brain is still in gear, mm -hmm. exactly. right? Yes. So the principles I've learned from Scripture, yes. you know, if angels cover their faces and cry, holy, 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 mm -hmm. I don't think God's asking us to make a fool of ourselves mm -hmm. in front of Him, whatever mm -hmm. that means. Does that make sense? No, yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Spirit and truth. Jason? Building off the idea of truth there, uh, Jonathan referenced... Uh, grounding it in uh, the truth and I think in this case it's in the Word of God and making sure that what you're singing, what you're worshiping, the music you're saying is consistent with what God has told us in His Word, the principles, the beliefs, the values. Okay, anyone want to add to that before I want to apply a little further, Nicole and then just, Gladys? I would add to that that would say that it should be a worship that draws you closer to Christ. Right. So what is the like, result of that worship? Right, mm -hmm. and it should reflect the person you're worshiping. Oh, right. and the character. Of, okay, exactly. so if I just go back w with a lot of adrenaline and emotional hype, and then I just kind of crash, rather than walking away saying, God is awesome. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus is my mm -hmm. marvelous Savior, right? right? What's the focus, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard, Gladys, I, I'm sorry, I, I forgot you. Yeah, I was, uh, Nicole just uh, told what I was going to say. Basically, you know, sometimes we just get consumed in, in the activity itself instead of who we're worshiping. <laughs> so we need to focus. That should be the focus. And like you said, you know, after the, the worship is over, that has to be like a renewal of our spirit instead of a draining activity because we were just working out, you know. So let's get activity. very practical then, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Um, do we allow our worship to really express to God how we genuinely feel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be. Should. You know, it, it, but I don't, don't think we do. You know, I he'd be, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> you know, and you look at them and you go, that's scary. <laughs> um, what are some things that hold us back? Again, we're not talking about showmanship or exhibitionism, mm. but you know, that the angels would look down and say, most people really love our Heavenly Father. Look at them. Look at the way they're, they're s hmm. singing the songs of the Lord. Hmm. What, what might hold us back from that, do you think, Nicole? I think sometimes we get consumed by our circumstance, and huh. we also we, we get so down by what's going on around us that we, when we come to church, we can't even put that aside to say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. So we get so bogged down in, oh, this happened and you're in church. Holy, holy. It's, it's our circumstance. We let those take over our ability to really be able to worship the person. So one thing then that may hold us back, Nicole, saying is we bring a lot of stuff with us, which is part of our lives, but it could distract us. What else might hold us back? Kenneth? Sometimes it's because of those who sat like... Um, we are afraid of how people are going to criticize us. So we are looking at how people are going to interpret what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, we hold back from um, actually rendering a very heartfelt worship mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. to God. And, and, and part of the reason we might be concerned by what people think is because we don't see many other people uninhibited mm -hmm. in their expression. expression of singing the songs of the Lord. If we saw some of them, <laughs> yeah, and we see they're not sh showmanship or exhibitionism. Yeah. They're just genuinely worshiping the Lord. That might uh, give us a sense of, what, freedom to be able to do so as well. Yeah. You've got lots of hands raising. <laughs> Is this an important topic? Yes. yes. Um, we have much to learn from Ezra and Nehemiah. Have you been to a worship service recently that looked like what we read in Ezra and Nehemiah, we just, it was heard afar off, and there was choirs and singing, and... No. 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 <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. Jonathan, share, share a time with me, if you would, when, when you experienced worship with music, you, you were talking to me about a time that just, just really lifted you to the throne room of God. Yeah, there was a uh, Christian concert that was um, specifically focused on worship. That it was it was amazing. 
I went to it, I wasn't sure, but after a little while, it was, yeah, I kind of lost sense of time. I was just forgetting about the people around me and just worshiping God. And was, was And what was your takeaway special. when you left that uh, concert? It felt like a kind of a taste of heaven, just mm. about how, like, mm. the joy uh, that it'll be to truly be able to, 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 mm. to with your whole heart, express and, and be mm. singing beautiful songs that it just, yeah, you, you enter another world and you don't have to worry about people around you because everyone else is, it's loud enough and no one else can really hear you, but <laughs> mm. you're worshiping with all your heart. Yeah. Anybody have an experience like that, Evelyn? I think a time that, that I sensed that was when you came to preach at Southern, it was fairly recently, um, we were singing Wonderful Merciful Savior and I remember you kept directing the students to sing the line over and over again. And I remember being so choked up. I, I could barely sing because I felt like crying. I was like, God, you are the one that we praise. Mm. And I just remember thinking, I wish service could be like this every time we have Vespers. Mm. I mean, mm. the music was absolutely beautiful. I happened Amen. to be at that same meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the presence of God was so palpable. Amen. We didn't want to leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we know God wants to be with us always like that. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so again, we, maybe the stuff that we bring. Now, to give a little context to that beautiful music and worship, the, the leaders of music had really prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were singing in key. They had some beautiful instruments. It wasn't loud and oh, kind of overwhelming, it was sweet and beautiful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also the people who had gathered, many of them were going to go either as student missionaries. Travis, you were there that night. Mm -hmm. I was. Many of them were going to go at, for a year of mission, volunteer mission service. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them were going to go and share the gospel message in short meetings during the summer. Mm -hmm. So the kind of people who came, does that make a difference? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. If people come with an open heart, Stephanie? I was thinking somewhat along the same line as Nicole, the, the distraction that could be is that we have lost our taste and our desire for the things of God. Mm -hmm. And so it no longer is beautiful to us. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> ah, wow. Mm -hmm. Either it's no longer beautiful or we just don't even know what it looks like yes. Yes. or what it sounds like. I'm going to take one more yes. comment from Jonathan and then we need to go on because singing is just one part of worshiping the Lord. Right. But could we agree from the 288 that David num named that it, it is an important part? Yes. 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 yes, Jonathan. I just want to add something to what was just previous, previously said. And the focus, our focus, where we have our attention also affects the way we worship mm -hmm. and the way we sing. So here we see that they were focused on what God was doing for them so they could properly worship Him. Mm. Sometimes we come to a church thinking and other things, and then the way we worship is affected by that. Absolutely. Mm. So if we, if our taste, as she was saying, for music, for worship, is destroyed or damaged by what we observed, if we want to restore it, we have to observe the proper things, mm -hmm. which is God. Mm -hmm. So we come focusing on Him. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, back to Evelyn, your experience there, people came who had surrendered their lives to God. They mm -hmm. wanted, and the worship leaders came prepared mm -hmm. to bring attention to God and not to themselves. Mm -hmm. And God showed up in Amen. a powerful way. Mm -hmm. yes. Another aspect of worshiping the Lord is experiencing cleansing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look in Nehemiah chapter 12. Jason, if you could read that for us, chapter 12 and verse 30. All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, Then the priests and Levites purified themselves and purified the people, the gates, and the wall. Another word for purified is cleansed. cleansed. So let's talk about cleansing and worship. Um, question. Should I be cleansed before I come to worship? Is that an essential preparation for coming? Mm -hmm. Or can I experience cleansing in the worship? Both. 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 Oh, both. both. Yes. What is cleansing? So, okay, that's a good question, Nicole. <laughs> uh, yeah. What is cleansing? Well, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Or... 
Acts chapter 2, be baptized for the washing way of your sins. Yes. So cleansing is forgiveness and a restoration of purity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a gift of God. Yes. Would that be a good preparation for worship? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can I come if I've not experienced that? Yes. 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 Jonathan? I just want to say that we cannot clean ourselves. Right. So we cannot pretend to go and clean to worship. So we have to have a predisposition, a willingness to be cleansed and go and behold His presence as we behold His presence, as we worship Him, as we, get in, we are in contact with God, we are cleansed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember someone said, I can't go and celebrate the Lord's Supper communion because I don't feel worthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, that's why. That's that no one could go. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we go, because yep. we're not worthy. Who's worthy? Jesus, yeah. Jesus is worthy. Yeah. Now, that's different from 1 Corinthians 11 talking about doing it in unworthy mm -hmm. manner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's talking about carelessness, mm -hmm. lack of reverence. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Jonathan makes a good point. If I say, well, I don't think I'm clean enough to come and worship the Lord. It's mm. coming and worshiping Him that I can experience that mm. restoration, that transformation. Can it? Uh, recently, my wife took me to enjoy um, one of her Christian contemporary music um, festival. And at first, I was hesitant. But when we get there, what I saw and what the musician said, he says, you know, sometimes you guys just think that the music just comes naturally. But let me tell you, before I come to sing, I spend some time with God. Mm. Not a day. He said, I dedicate a week praying and mm. preparing myself so that the music that I'm going to sing or minister is going to impact the lives of people. Mm. So this is how I see the sort of cleansing and preparation that we can do so that when we come together with fellow believers, the music will make a joyful noise to God and impact the people who come there. Right. So that's interesting that Kenneth's saying the preparation is not only by the worshiper who comes, mm -hmm. yeah. but the one who's leading in worship. Yeah. 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 We're going to come back to that a little later, mm -hmm. but that's so important. Let's, let's focus again on the need for cleansing as part of worship. Mm. 1 John 1 verse 9 is fairly well known by many Christians about if we confess our sins. But I would like to start in verse 7. 1 John 1. Addison, if you could start with verse 7. Listen carefully. The Apostle John speaking under inspiration of God. Verses 7 through 9. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. How many of us need cleansing? All of us. In fact, if we think we don't, deceive we deceive ourselves. ourselves. We deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. right. The truth's not in us. Right? Yeah. We all need cleansing. And, and ideally, before I even come to worship, I prepare and I say, Lord, make me clean mm -hmm. like the new fallen snow. Mm -hmm. But I may come just as I am and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Remember that man who beat on his... If he'd waited to come, yeah. no, he came just as he was, he was. And he experienced the cleansing that he so desperately needed. Mm -hmm. So this cleansing experience, I'd like someone to share a time when you experience that cleansing uh, of God as uh, you lifted your heart in praise mm. and worship to Him. Mm. And I'm going to have a, a story that comes to mind. Gladys. Yeah, actually I was not in church. I was in my classroom and my heart was very burdened with situations I'd had before. But I had to teach Bible. So I was like, Lord, I don't know how to do this because my heart is not in it. And it was creation. So I said, oh, I don't have to, I don't, I really, I can do this with my eyes closed because it's about creation. And for the first time, God, with the singing the kids were doing and the reading of the word of God, God just blessed my heart. When I read that scripture, in the beginning, God created mm. the heavens and the earth. It struck me like for the first time. Mm. I just started weeping because I just could not believe that in the beginning, 
the world was in chaos. And I felt like I was talking to me. Mm -hmm. Your world is in mm -hmm. chaos. And I am here to bring light. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a, a wonderful worship experience for me. And I was just not even ready for that. And the kids were like singing and singing, you know, let there be light, this little light of mine. I don't know how they just connected all these songs mm -hmm. together. And it was just such a blessing. And it was not even a church. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a church, actually. <laughs> and the angels were saying to the children, keep singing. Keep singing. <laughs> keep singing. Amen. We can experience the cleansing of God sometimes in unexpected in places. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a story? Addison. Well, lately I've been doing a lot of road tripping. Um, and For those who may be, because we've got 150 countries, <laughs> there you go. road tripping would mean? Well, sometimes it means going to Canada. <laughs> okay, so long drives long in a drive, car? Long drives, sometimes okay. 45, 48 hours. That is long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I try to, you know, space it out a little bit, but sometimes knock it all out. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of time to think as you're driving. Mm -hmm. and, and I also enjoy listening to music. And so I was listening as I was driving and thinking about heaven and thinking about Jesus and all the good things he's done for me personally the song began to play and it was called Lord have mercy on me mm. and I just began to and even brought tears to my eyes because I began to rethink just mm. just how imperfect I am right. and the times I let people down and, and the times when I just I fall short mm. and it really was a moving experience at an unexpected time mm. and you were driving I was driving right. and you had windshield wipers to <laughs> wipe the tears I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. God can catch us yes. if we don't keep putting up barriers, right? Yes. Uh, maybe at a Christian concert or maybe one-on-one -on -one listening while I'm on a long road trip. Yes. God can catch our attention. Mm -hmm. Songs of praise, important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cleansing, yes. important mm -hmm. as part of worship. But also the Bible speaks about offering sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Now we know in the Old Testament time, the ceremonial system, those sacrifices were animals, right? Mm -hmm. Birds and animals and grain offerings and different part, all pointing forward to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus our all-sufficient Savior. Mm -hmm. Look at Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 43. Again, we're focusing here on how they were worshiping the Lord at that time. Mm. Uh, Nehemiah 12, Travis, if you'd read verse 43, and notice what it says. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with, rejoice with great joy. The women and the children also rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. Mm -hmm. What do you think it means when it says they offered great sacrifices? First of all, do you think it's talking about animal sacrifices there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe even more. It could be. Animal. Maybe more, Maybe but more it could include it. that, right? Yes. Yeah, I was Jonathan? thinking it was could be alluding back to when Solomon dedicated the temple, and I was trying to think of the number, but it was like thousands upon thousands. Right. All these sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So would you say then... it? But, but Ken is thinking it was more than just maybe animal sacrifices yeah. or sacrifice. What other kinds of sacrifices might they have offered that day? Um, their time. Mm -hmm. Their time. Grain. The, the time. Grain. Also, Grain. Okay. Yeah, first, fruits. I mean, first fruits. First fruits. Yeah. Yeah. Money. Themselves. Themselves. Yeah. <laughs> right. Money. For God's service. And what, what's, the, what's the great, Travis? Well, it, it says, the verse after that, at the same time, they were appointed rooms for storehouse. So that means if there was rooms being appointed to store the offerings and the, the things, I'm thinking that they were bringing gifts and, okay. uh, to the Lord, you know, presenting things to him. Some, some might have been animals that were killed. Some yeah. might have been Free will offerings, sacrificial offerings that would help the support of the temple, mm -hmm. the priests, the mm -hmm. Levites, mm -hmm. the singers, mm -hmm. yes. right? Yeah, right. The bringing. So great, would you say great in terms of quantity or significance? Significance. I, I, I would, I would probably both. Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah, both. Yeah, both. I think it's both. <laughs> yeah, quality. I would look at the and quality. quality. You'd say quality. Yeah. And quantity. And quantity, yes. Yeah. It was both. Significance. Yeah. You'd say they weren't... Uh, 
you know, they weren't saying, what's the least I have to bring? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. it. Right. Mm. You remember when Moses called for the building of the mm. sanctuary, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the response was so right. yeah. overwhelming. Moses had to say, we have enough. That's right. Yeah. Mm. That, that's uh, that's a, a heartfelt response, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm just thinking, it'd be so nice today if mm. our churches could tell people to stop bringing mm. because we have enough to support the needy, the folks who are in, in need in our church. And it's just an example for us that we have a ways to go when it comes to doing what Christ wants, which is helping those around us that are in mm. such need. Mm. Right. Mm. So let's talk about today. Mm. We don't sacrifice animals. Why don't we sacrifice lambs anymore? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb of That's God. Right. He died once for all, yep. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yep. And so instead of focusing on a little helpless lamb, beast, yeah. we focus on Jesus, yeah. right? So what sacrifices can we bring as mm -hmm. part of worship in spirit and truth? What do you think? Us. I think um, mm -hmm. somewhere in the book of Romans it says we should present ourselves as living sacrifices. That's right. That's right. In yeah. Romans chapter 12, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Say, pr present your bodies as a living, living, sacrifice. A living sacrifice, holy living and acceptable to God. Which is My which is translation says, which, which is, is your reasonable, reasonable service. And it goes on to say, don't be conformed to... This world. This, world. To this world, but be transformed. So maybe part of the sacrifice we bring is a willingness to finish the sentence. Be transformed. To be transformed. That's right. It's not, as Jonathan mentioned earlier, that we come because we look so good, <laughs> but we are willing for God to do whatever He wants to do. Is that an act of worship? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. It makes me think of the verse of the sacrifices of the Lord are broken and contrite spirits. Right? Amen. Mm. And uh, I think that captures a lot of the, mm. what, yeah, what, what it's about and what Christ went through and his example for us. Mm -hmm. Willing to be humble and come down and be beaten by all these people and to live a life without, without I mean, all the things that, that we look for, he gave up and said, okay, that's, I, I give this up. And um, kind of, he lived that Romans 12, let your life, body be a living sacrifice. And, and I think Jonathan's making an important point here that when we come to true worship in spirit and truth, our focus is not on whatever sacrifices we are making. Mm -hmm. We will make them yeah. as a loving response, mm -hmm. but our focus should be on the sacrifice that, Jesus that, Jesus made. Made. that he has made, Amen. Amen. right? Amen. God forbid, Paul says, that I, I should, should boast glory. or glory Save. except Save. in the cross of Christ my Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. My, that's where my focus should be, mm -hmm. in true worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how are we doing with that? <laughs> uh, is Christ always the, the focal point? Mm -hmm. no. Is that not our prayer in Hope Sabbath School? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Whatever we're studying about, mm -hmm. <laughs> that yes. people would catch a clearer and yet clearer revelation of what? Jesus. The immeasurable, unfailing love of God and that Jesus would be lifted up. That would be lifted up. So the sacrifices we bring, we're singing songs to the Lord, we are experiencing cleansing, and the sacrifice is ourselves in worship and thankfulness to God. One who loved us and gave himself for us, right, yeah. Travis? And, and our sacrifices also can be with our tithes and offerings as mm -hmm. they did back then. That's right. Because the work can go forward, you know, when we uh, contribute, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Hope mm -hmm. Sabbath School is donor-based. Without offerings um, to the Hope Channel, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be here. Right. And some of you pay to drive all the way here or to fly all the way here. Right? Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? <laughs> Someone said they just want to be on television. Let me tell you, it's not worth it. <laughs> it has to be because you see lives are being changed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So your coming here is an act of mm. worship. worship. Mm. It's an act of worship. Jason? And the utilizing of our time, too. Mm. Yeah. It's an act of worship. Mm. Yes. True. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got three important lessons we've learned so far. We've learned singing songs to the Lord mm. was really important part of worship then. Mm -hmm. And we mustn't lose sight of that. Yes. Mm. Right? Right. Even if we're singing 
a two, three hundred, five hundred year old song, three thousand year old scripture mm -hmm. song. You know, if we're singing Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress is Our God, you know, yeah. and though the world with devil's filth should threaten to do, undo us, we shall not fear. I mean, let's sing it like we mean Maybe. it. What yeah. is that? Yeah. So, so that is an important part of worship. The cleansing yes. is an important part of worship. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, offering, mm -hmm. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. not, not animals, but heart mm -hmm. and gifts mm -hmm. in gratitude for what God has done, not to pay right. or to earn His favor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But a fourth lesson we learn Look in Nehemiah 12, verse 44. You could almost miss it. It's actually just at the end of that verse. Mm. And it talks about giving thanks for those who lead in worship. Mm. Someone like to read that for us, Gladys? Nehemiah 12, verse 44. Yes, I'll be reading from the New International Version. At that time, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the contributions, first fruits and, th and tithes from, from the fields around the towns. They were to bring into the storerooms the portions required by the law for the priests and the Levites, for Judah was pleased with the ministering priests and Levites. Mm -hmm. Judah was pleased, my Bible says, they rejoiced. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, they appreciated... Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm the spiritual leader that was being, yes. leadership that was being provided. Um, mm. Who did they represent, these priests and mm. Levites? The pastors. Yeah. Yeah. Who did they represent? Yeah. 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 They, they, the solemn thought is that they actually represent the character of God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. that's why Jesus gets so upset <laughs> when He comes and they've turned his father's house into a den, a den, of, a den of thieves, a marketplace. Market, yeah. How dare you do that, he yeah. said. Yeah. It shall be called the house of prayer right. for all, all people. people. For all people. So the responsibility of those leading in worship mm -hmm. is to reflect the That's character right. of God. Right. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's talk about a time when God blessed you. We talked about music, but I'm now going to broaden it out to worship in general, hmm. that God used someone, in a sense representing the truth about who He was, to bless your life in worship. Hmm. Can you think of a time? It may have been in a church or it may have been somewhere else. It may have been at a camp. Or it may have been uh, at a training program. Travis, a time that God... Use someone to bless your life uh, it was, in worship. I was, uh, I did the school of evangelism in Australia, a RISE program, and uh, I remember the last day, it was a Thursday, and his, the presenter was James Rafferty, mm -hmm. and he was presenting Revelation in a way I had never seen it presented before. And uh, I remember, it was an hour long, I remember weeping almost the entire time, the way mm -hmm. he presented Jesus in the light of love and Re Revelation. Uh, it was just an amazing thing. I, I, I taped it on my phone and I still have it and will listen to it sometimes from time to time. It just brings, still brings tears to my eyes. So it was just God used him in a part. So way. God used James, yeah. a man yeah. named James <laughs> mm -hmm. to reflect the beauty of God's character yep. mm -hmm. in the message that he shared. Yeah. And, and praise God that that messenger didn't get in the way, mm. Yeah. Mm. right? Yeah. Yes. Could happen. Stephanie, a time. Yeah, I was thinking of a church that I attended in Tennessee, and the leader who was leading out in the songs, she sang with such joy. And I told her later, I said, you sing as if you believe what you're singing. Mm. And she said, I do. <laughs> it was just so inspiring to see her smiling face and really we're marching to Zion. You mm. know, whatever that the songs were, she was very engaged and you could tell she believed what she, the message she was singing. Mm. And that inspired me because mm. I thought that's, that's an awesome example. That's that was part of the sermon, yes. right? Yes. Mm. It can be. That God can use a person. We ought to thank God for those people. Amen. 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 Addison? I just 
a pastor back home came to mind. He's an old family friend of ours. He baptized my dad back in 1994. And in 2011, he baptized my brother and I, my twin brother, uh, both on the same day. So it was a really special moment. But what led to that was his involvement in our church. He would come to our church and he would preach and lead out in worship. And I remember growing up uh, as a child and moving into my early teens, just the impact of his messages mm -hmm. and the sincerity that he was that he possessed. He was truly vindicating the character of Christ mm -hmm. and had a huge impression on my life. And so his ability to lead in worship ultimately led to my cleansing, Amen. experiencing God. baptism, <laughs> and uh, truly a blessing. Is he still living? He's still living. I hope he watches Hope Sabbath School. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> and he'll see that testimony. And he, yeah. you know what he'll say? Praise, Praise, God. Praise God. God. Glory to God. Probably with tears running down his cheeks, right? Mm -hmm. He'll say, Praise God. Amen. Or he may even use my favorite Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Maybe a little less in him. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That God could use a woman, a man like, it, like us, you know, hmm. to do something supernatural, hmm. like change a person's life. Yeah. Praise God. Someone else. Yes, Jason. Well, uh, I was invited to church a while back uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, and it was a, I forget his name, but he asked me to come and I did. He's an older gentleman, kind of stocky, but he had a voice that was very, very mm. bassy. And they had a song that they were singing at the church and he was sitting right next to me and he was drowning me out. <laughs> and he was so poor, and it allowed me to be uninhibited, me to express. And I could just sing and sing and sing. And I just, you know, it, it might not seem like a blessing, but at the same time it was because I could just be myself and mm -hmm. sing because of course, couldn't nobody really hear me because he was next to me <laughs> just barely from afar. Everybody could hear him from afar, but it, yeah. as I look back at it, it really was a blessing because at that point, you know, I was kind of, you know, I was a babe in Christ. I was kind of scared to sing, you know, because I really can't sing, but I made a joyful <laughs> noise that, that sounded to heaven, but it really was a blessing though. It, it really helped me come out of my comfort zone. Like singing with the angel choirs. Amen. <laughs> like sing up. It's going to sound okay. It's going to sound okay. Exactly, exactly. It's going to sound okay. <laughs> we certainly can thank God for people who lead in worship, who God's used to bless our, our lives. I, I'd like to close by asking, we're talking here about worshiping the Lord. The Bible also says when you give, it's given back to you. Mm -hmm. Can you think of a time when God gave you the opportunity to help lead a worship and you were blessed? Uh, in, in, in that experience. Yeah. Anybody? That you were given an opportunity to lead in worship. Kenneth? Uh, uh, recently was um, one of our Friday um, worships that we have young couples we meet. And everyone, not knowing, everyone has, has had a very rough week. So when we came, they said I should lead. And um, after we read the scripture, I asked how is the message, you know, how is God speaking to them personally? And then each individual shared their experience throughout the week and how the hymns and then the scripture was very appropriate to speak to us. So that their testimony that they shared on that day really blessed me and lifted me up. And this was a group of how many couples? Um, about eight. About eight couples. You, you and your wife were helping to lead yeah. that. Yeah. And as God gave you a scripture and as they responded to how that impacted them, yeah. it, it was you were blessed in return? More than blessed. More than blessed. More than blessed. Mm -hmm. Yes, Gladys. Yes, every month I go to prison ministry. I do prison ministry mm -hmm. at a prison here in Maryland. And it's just amazing how we don't have any contact with them pr prior to going to visit. And I preach there regularly. And it amazes me always the, the message that God sa uh, impresses me to present. Mm -hmm. How the songs that they prepare, the prayers that they prepare, everything that they share, it just goes like, together. It, it amazes me every single time because we never talk, you know, with them to say, hey, read this scripture or sing this song or prepare this hymn. Mm. We just come prepared to bring the message mm. and everything in the worship just comes together and it blesses me mm. every single time. And I always say that that's my favorite Sabbath of the month. <laughs> As you come to worship together. Yes. Yeah. We've, God may give you the opportunity um, not only to go and worship, mm. sing with all your heart, heart yeah, amen. experience cleansing, mm. 
offer sacrifices, mm. affirm those who are leading in worship. Mm. But God may also give you an opportunity to lead. Mm. He may, in response to what we've studied here, mm. or maybe you're watching, God may give you a chance to lead. So we've talked about the importance of preparation. Mm. What, from what you've learned about worshiping in spirit and truth, what would you say is the most important preparation either in coming to worship or in coming to lead worship? Maybe it's the same for both. Mm -hmm. The most important preparation. Mm -hmm. What would you say, Travis? Courage and humility. Okay. Mm -hmm. Courage to not be inhibited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But humility to say it's all about him yes, and sir. not about me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. And want to add to that, Jonathan? Recognition of our dependence upon Him and mm -hmm. just throwing ourselves upon Him. And Even when we come to worship, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. not just coming to lead worship. Yes. Yeah. In, all, yeah, in multiple ways. Right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> God, even, even coming to worship, I really can't worship you mm. like you deserve. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, for a variety of reasons, bringing a lot of stuff with me, mm -hmm. or I've never seen people really worshiping in spirit and truth. Yeah. But here I am. And I come in my great need. Mm -hmm. You do what you need to do. Evelyn? Um, I've been a part of some worship teams here and there. And sometimes the team is very focused on, we need to get the harmony right. And we need to make sure we hit every note exactly. And we don't exactly focus on, okay, is this music really uplifting God? Or, or are the people who are going to hear going to be blessed? Mm -hmm. And I've realized that those worships are the ones we're most nervous in. It's, it's the worships that we are anxious to go and, and sing. However, I, I've contrasted that with worships where we're really praying. We're saying, God, I ask that this music bless those who hear it. Those are the best worships that we The very have. best. Yeah. Yeah. When God is lifted up, when my heart is aligned with His heart, and when I'm saying, God, this is all about you, whether I'm worshiping or leading in worship, whether I'm singing, uh, whether I'm asking for cleansing, whether I'm offering a sacrifice or giving thanks for those who are worshiping. Let my heart beat with your heart mm. and let my worship, by your grace, bring joy to your heart. Is that your prayer today? Amen. Amen. Let's pray that will happen even in the worships that are just ahead of us. <laughs> Father in heaven, you are worthy of all worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for all you've done for our salvation, we praise you and worship you even today. Mm. And we pray from the principles we've learned from Ezra and Nehemiah that we would go on to worship you in spirit and truth just as Jesus longed for us to do. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Go out and be a blessing to those around you.